UN 영어 뉴스, The Lighthouse Way, Walking Spain's Other Camino. Few know about the vastly more meditative nearby Camino dos Faros or Lighthouse Way along the wild and deserted Finister Coast that's known as the end of the earth. The narrow path weaved along the side of a voltiginous promontory carpeted with ferns and the occasional cluster of watercups and purple holy hawks. Wispy tendrils of fog dissolved and the June sunshine warmed my back as I stood on a wind sculpted granite boulder and peered into the Atlantic Ocean's cobalt depths. The cries of girls mixed with the sound of waves crashing against the rocks, releasing cascades of salt charged spray. I could still see the fingernail outline of the creamy beach we'd traversed earlier, where proverbs scuttled from the incoming tide. Once in a while, I discover a place so surprising, so unspoiled, that it's conflicting to write about it. But if the article helps tip the skin between the unknown and the inundated, the Camino dos Faros, or Lighthouse Way, along the northwest tip of Spain, in Galicia is such a place. There is, of course, another Camino in these parts. The Camino de Santiago reached its modern-day record in 2022 with more than 438,000 pilgrims walking to what many believe to be the final resting place of the Apostle St. James. The Camino de Santiago generally follows paved roads and ends at Santiago de Compostela. Although, all, although some pilgrims continue on a spur of the Camino de Santiago to the Finister Lighthouse, if you know about the new, nearby, vastly more meditative lighthouse way, which also ends at the Finister Lighthouse, but follows a completely different liminal pathway between sea and land along the often stormy, sometimes serene Costa da Morte, Costa da Morte, Coast of Death. The Lighthouse Way offers an invigorating alternative as we all search for more space, more uh, uh, serenity, and more meaningful immersion in wild landscapes that retain a powerful connection to ancient ways. On our five-day walk, my husband and I, I saw just eight other people on the trail. The coast of death had seen more than 150 shipwrecks over the last century. The Costa da Morte is among the most dangerous of the world's shipping routes, with more than 150 shipwrecks over the last century. Hence, their 14 lighthouses is also one of the
the most pristine wild coasts in Europe. Forget your image of Spain, as dry and parched, with its maritime climate and vast untamed ocean. Galicia is a wild version of Wales and Brittany. Pine forests and wild fire, wild, wild flowers, clean, limpet like to its rugged headlands. Hydrangeas climb dry stone village walls. A decade ago, six Galician friends hatched an idea to create a walking path along its vast sandy beaches, granite cliffs, and serene bird filled estuaries to help others experience their beloved homeland, their vision to create a continuous trail linking the ancient whaling port of Malpica with the lighthouse in Finister, which as far back as Roman times has been considered the end of the earth. They talked to local fishermen and farmers about hidden paths and started mapping a safe route which they shared on Facebook, offering group walks along sections of the nascent trail. In 2014, they created a non-profit association whose volunteers began clearing the vegetation and marking the route with lime green circles, arrows, and tiny four-toed footprints of the Trasky, the lighthouse weighs mythical green imp with a labyrinth, the Celtic symbol of Galicia, on its chest and a lighthouse beam on its walking stick. Christina Alonso grew up in the Cabo Villan lighthouse near the port town of Camarinas as the daughter of one of Spain's first female lighthouse keepers. She is now the president of the Lighthouse Way Association. The Cabo Villan Lighthouse is one of 14 lighthouses along the route. I wanted to explore more of my own backyard and became fascinated with this grassroots social movement, she said. The Lighthouse Way is all about immersing people in our remarkable environment with the utmost, utmost respect for nature as well as showing our unique culture and history. We've built a big family of Trasnos, the name we give to all who walk the Lighthouse Way. And with this low-key sustainable tourism model, we are helping our small communities earn additional income by offering accommodation and meals and operating taxis, taxi, tax, uh, tax, taxi services. Today, the 200km lighthouse way is broken into eight stages which are described on its website with extensive trail notes accompanied by photos and videos detailing every step. There is also information on accommodation, restaurants, bars, bakeries, and taxis. We walked five stages of the trail and called taxis to take us to our nightly accommodation, which included everything from seaside inns to rustic outburges. Fog carpeted the coastline when we set out from the trailside as Gargas Inn on the outskirts of Malpica, named after the herons that frequent the islands offshore. 
the night before with savored white asparagus, clam ravioli, and sea bass with turnip greens alongside a flinty Galician Albarino white wine as a taste of the journey ahead. We, we weaved around the boulders that have been wind whipped into the shapes of eagles and bears and swirling genies as we climbed high over the forest of many headlands. Eventually, we reached Nariga Lighthouse, its base resembling the pool of a ship. Later, fragrant needles cushioned our feet as we walked through an alley of pines, covered by the wind. Around the next bend, we discovered a protected cove, its emerald water as calm as a bird bath. The route is marked with green circles, arrows, and the footprints of the trask. As we followed each green marker, it felt like our Trasnos friends were leading us along, showing us their special places, inviting us into their world. We scaled Monte Branco, the highest rampant dune in Europe, to watch foamy waves rolling across the scalloped coves of Tres Beach. I swam in a translucent, translucent sea at the nearby English cemetery. The graves of 172 sailors from an 1890 shipwreck told another story, inciting a British journalist to first give the Costa da Morte its morbid name. We walked along Reira Beach, framed by pink granite boulders and fissured, fissured headlands. And at the top of the hill, we saw the Cabo Villan lighthouse, hurriedly built as Spain's first electric lighthouse in 1896-96, to prevent, to prevent more tragedies. The cries of Kitty Wakes and Guillemos soared on the thermals that also power nearby wind turbines, which are ever-present 21st century sentinels alongside these time-worn paths. Past fields of gold and heather, heather that smoldered, smoldered ancient dry stone walls, we arrived at the Virgin of the Mount Chapel, where is it said fishermen's wives used to climb to the roof to change the position of the tiles in the belief this would alter the wind direction and bring their husbands home. Centuries of enduring, cajoling, and now harnessing the wind were laid out before us like a picture book. Arriving in the sheltered fishing port of Camarinas, we devoured razor clams and skate stew at O Meula, its owner, one of the passionate local Trasnos who welcomes workers from all over the world. A day later, as howling wind and rain battled the headland in Murcia, we discovered a perida, a jagged granite, <coughs> a jagged granite sculpture honoring the volunteers who came from across the planet to clean this fragile coastline after an oil tanker spill in 2002 caused one of the worst ecological disasters 
in Spanish history. Away from the coast, hikers will pass the remains of an Iron Age hill fort. Most of the lighthouse way hugs the coast, but sometimes we headed inland to walk beside sinuous estuaries where locals harvested clams and threw hamlets dotted with Galicia's granite horeo granaries on a toadstool like stone stilts after climbing through eucalypt forest of 19th century Galician missionary brought seeds back from Australia. We wandered on around the foundations of round stone houses at an Iron Age hill fort nearby. We explored the mysterious Dolmen de Dombait, a megalithic tomb from 4000 BCE. Another day, we walked past ancient stone mills along a shady street, lush with ferns and color lilies, overhanging willows and fig trees. Each step of the way, as I breathed cool, clean sea air deep into my lungs and listened to waves crashing against rocks and spring water gurgling from inside the earth. My mind was stilled. I wasn't looking for any grand revelations, but I don't recollect the last time I felt so completely in the moment, filled with awe at the vast blue horizon, the sculpted rocks, the tranquil coves, and the intricate patterns of wildflower petals, butterfly wings, and snail shells. The final stage ended with a symbol crash of one of gobsnacking witch after another, each framed by muscular headlands. Our boots squeaked along Nemina's wild surf beach, the wide sweep of Playa de Rostro, and the protected wedge of Playa de Arnella, where I swam in turquoise waters one last time. Then we scrambled up a steep path littered with gorse and sea dripped flowers as the sea currents swirled far below. Golden grasses lined our way along narrow ridges all the way to Made Fora Beach behind the fishing village of Fisterra. The lighthouse way ends at the Finister Lighthouse where hikers can stay at the hotel Semaphora, Semaphora. One last passage through tall fawn glades, tall fawn glades. One more hill dotted with honeysuckle and daisies as we climbed Monte do Facho to peer down. Finally, on the finished the lighthouse and the end of the lighthouse way. Celtic druids celebrated rituals here along an altar dedicated to the sun long before St. James was born. We saw a stream of pilgrims to the spur of the Camino de Santiago walking beside the beach road and past souvenir shops to the rocky tip. For us, we wished the path could go on forever. We headed instead to the Hotel Semaphore, a whimsical conversion of one of 
the lighthouse buildings here in the tower as the sun sank into the horizon we celebrated the journey with an albarino bone of granite soils and briny gooseneck barnacles and octopus from the wild ocean below then we bedded down for the night the quiet pulsing of the light offering a comforting red to our dreams right here on the edge of the earth